Welcome all to a special edition of RGN. We take a break from our regular programming to bring you C64 Battle, where we pit two games from yesteryear with similar themes against each other and determine which is the stronger title. And in the inaugural episode of C64 Battle, we have The Last Ninja taking on The Last Ninja 2. Looking at the tail of the tape, there's very little to differentiate the games from each other, so it should be a closely contested battle. So without any further ado, let's throw across to RGN HQ and kick off the battle. Welcome everyone to the first C64 Battle series on RGN. I'm your host Louis and I'm joined today by Brendan from Bastage B 64K. How are you doing Brendan? I'm doing pretty good and you Louis? Oh, doing great and it's great to have you on board here joining us on RGN today. Pleasure. Look, the first uh, topic of our C64 Battle series is going to cover Last Ninja 1 and 2. I pretty sure I can speak for yourself as well Brendan that these yeah. are two games that we were very fond of as we were growing up. I very know much. that yeah, very much yeah. I know that um, when when I first saw the preview of Last Ninja One on I think it was on Commodore User Magazine May edition yeah. I think mm-hmm. 1987, mm-hmm. I just had my breath taken away. I said it was something about whether it was yeah. the ninjas, whether it was mm-hmm. the <laughs> the multi colors in an isometric view, something yeah. that just instantly drew me to it, and I was just salivating. It's release. I couldn't wait for it to come out. Uh, do you recall when you first pro- probably saw a glimpse of Last Ninja? Well, it's it's so weird that you said that because we never we never planned what each other are going to say here. So I didn't know he was going to say this, but I've actually got the magazine, the uh, Commodore user, the, the the May nineteen eighty six. Always My prepared. My cover is gone. <laughs> the cover is ripped off. Um, that's how much I read this thing, <laughs> and um, I read the exact same magazine here it is this is the preview for the last ninja i looked at this a million times i can't even tell you how many times i read over it and what's what's funny is that it actually has a few little graphical differences if you look back at this preview now which is kind of interesting but i was just mesmerized by it the like like you said the asymmetric view you didn't really see that that much in games um especially on the commodore yeah uh, the, the only ones that you really saw were uh, like spectrum ports, like head over heels and stuff like that, yeah. but it didn't have the same look. This game actually looked like a Commodore game as yeah. opposed to looking like a spectrum game. So that's what drew me in. And also, like like you said, the colors and the look, I was just like completely obsessed. It, and it didn't, it didn't help that, you know, I was obsessed with ninjas at the time. <laughs> You know, I think everybody, I'm, I'm sure you were also, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and and what was quite interesting was um, even before I actually was able to get my hands on Last Ninja 1 and play it, um, in, I remember in high school we had a project uh, to code a simple uh, traffic light routine, you know, traffic light changing routine. Yeah. And I, based purely based on those common user screenshots, I actually designed mine in the isometric Last Ninja view with the the gr- the nice. grey paths, the green fields, yeah. and the ice. So it was it was quite you know I was really hooked into I was I had me oh. be, before I even played the game. So um, it, it's it's just fantastic recalling those type of memories there. Like I said, yeah. like you just reading the magazine over and over again, and until the pages the the ink was starting to smudge and. Yeah, it was amazing. To my cover fell off. Yes. <laughs> and, and here's my here's my original. Oh, you got the original as well? It's, this is my original one. This yes. isn't one I rebought. No. This is my one I got in nineteen eighty seven. And uh I got this for my birthday. Nice. Because after reading that nineteen eighty six thing, and I read that for months and months and months, um, I asked my dad if he could get this for me, and he went to the local computer shop and they ordered it. Wow. It took a long time to get it. But obviously, it was the game only came out in 1987. So, but it, anyway, this is the original one. And wow. wow. I just, it's so good to have this still. <laughs> yes. Did you, did you have similar memories of Last Ninja 2? Because I mean, I said, um, obviously, upon completing, you know, spoiler alert, Last Ninja 1, it does finish off by saying to be continued. Yeah, and yeah. then uh, we didn't really know what to expect, and again, till we sort of first got a hint of, I suppose, the New York City, Manhattan type yeah. setting. Mm-hmm. Um, did you, did you, do you recall what feelings you had with the game back then? Yeah, um, I it, remember when I first saw the. Uh, I think I read a review of it in Commodore User. Yeah, it's this issue. Yeah, 
This is my original one from back yes. in the day as well. And I actually, I knew the game was coming out long before that I read this, the, yeah, the review, yeah. long before it came out. And I knew it had a New York setting. And I was actually kind of interested in that because I loved the movie Highlander. Yes. And I, it just immediately just gave me those, that kind of vibe, like, you know, like fighting guys, sword fighting in New York, that kind of thing. So I was really excited. And he has my original um, Glass Ninja 2. Now, is that, uh, this, is that with yeah. the Ninja Mask and Star or is that the uh, poor yeah, one? Yeah, this is, this is the limited edition with uh, the, the Star and the Mask. And I don't have the Star and the Mask anymore because I wore it. Yes. I wore the Mask and I threw the Star at everybody that oh. I came across. So Oh, that's star, a shame because I was actually going to ask you to put the mask on. <laughs> it's gone. I've only got the tape and the map still yep. in here. Yeah, but the actual trinkets are gone. Oh, uh, yeah. So unfortunately, have... unfortunately, I wasn't able to uh, secure the one with the star and the mask. So yeah. um, I was uh, quite envious Just of those fun, that found it. A fun fact with that with that star, that thing is hard. Yeah. Anybody that that got that, that thing is hard as a rock. If you threw that at somebody, you could seriously do like it hurt. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't like all like squishy like you think it is. It was hard. If you threw it at somebody's eye, you yeah. could take somebody out. <laughs> you, you didn't test that out on one of your siblings, did you? Uh, oh yeah, I definitely <laughs> threw it at everybody. <laughs> Oh, great, great, great! Well, you said it's 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 these type of memories, I suppose, that draw us back to our little hobby of Commodore sixty four and um, give us all those nice, warm, and fuzzy feelings. Um, what did What did you think about the setting for Lost Ninja, Ninja Two? Just initially? Oh, initially, I was actually quite pumped for it. I was, I, I yeah. thought, oh, what, that's because I always probably had a fascination uh, with New York. You know, mm -hmm. one as a kid, one day maybe going there at the big city, and yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and so. It, it, it did um, bring me in, though. With Last Ninja One, I do love the traditional setting of yeah. a Japanese mm -hmm. island with its tranquil environment. So, uh, but to its credit, I think it was uh, you've got to give them credit for uh, for taking the uh, franchise to a new location to give yeah. it a new aesthetic to make it feel like it, it they do feel like two distinct games and I'll, we'll touch on that later on uh, when mm -hmm. we get to the gameplay especially as well yeah. um if, if we can probably look at the first part of our so i suppose the battle criteria that's around the graphics last ninja one and two are known for their multicolored isometric graphics as we touched on earlier they are one of the the, the first thing that pops out at you and grabs you and draws you in mm -hmm. to, to say here is a game for you to play what did you make of the graphics well, I was absolutely in love with them. Uh, I was amazed. I remember when uh, I loaded the game up for the first time. I loaded up just before I went to school because I just had to see what it looked like before I went. Because it was my birthday. It was a weekday, I guess. It was Wednesday or Thursday, whatever it was. So I had it loaded up quickly just to have a look. And uh, I remember like just running around briefly and running past a tree and my character went, yeah, you know, yes. He went behind the tree. Yes. And, and I know that seems like, like, like you think about it now, and people are like, oh, please give me a break. Big deal. But no, it was a really big deal. Like running behind a rock when, and your character disappears. Like, yes. You know, even, even to this day, side. even to this day, mm. most, uh, you know, many C64 game titles don't allow you to run don't behind really something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that just blew me away. I even called my dad. I said, you need to come have a look at this. <laughs> I ran behind the tree and my character goes behind the tree. And he's like, he was actually impressed. He was like, that's pretty cool. Oh. <laughs> and, and, but yeah, the graphics were amazing. I like, like you said, I love the setting of the first one, uh, set it like having a set in Japan and a kind of, uh, ancient tranquil setting, you know, the Tory gates, the temples, I've always had a, like a fascination with Japan. Yes, and vis visiting it, I have visited it before. So, but you know, it's just, it was just like that setting just drew me in like immediately, and uh, the colors, everything. I like the distinction between each level in the game. Also, each one, um, it's not like they just use the graphics. You know, like a lot of old games, they would reuse most of the same graphics and each level is different, but yes. it's pretty similar. But Last Ninja, it felt like each level had its own identity. 
It, it did, so. e- even mm-hmm. with the first three levels, which are on the, I suppose, the island. Um, yeah. But each one has their subtle differences. You know, it, it does feel like, you know, as I said, the wilderness going in and you, you're going on to the next phase where it, it it didn't only just provide a different aesthetic, but it also felt like you were progressing to something. Yeah. I think that was quite key. It, it felt, hey, here's sparse area. Now we're getting into mm-hmm. a little bit more tranquil, yeah. a little bit more beautiful aesthetic-wise. You know, here's a little bit of mountains to figure out how to climb up, jump over a cliff, etc. cetera. So it, yeah. I really appreciated those subtle differences in the three. And then obviously we hit the fourth dungeon level and then all yeah. of a sudden, whoa, okay. Yeah, like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. It, 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 that, it, now it's a bit different here, a, bit, a little bit more dark. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's it's like each level was telling a part of the story i felt yes like you know it, it it's subtle there's nothing like written and anything like that but in your mind you have that progression which yes. is which was really cool for back then yeah and and uh, I, and this is what i think maybe for, when i con- uh, uh, compare it to last ninja 2 where maybe i didn't get that sense so um mm. f- me personally at last ninja with last ninja one i i really liked the first level in the central park area and yeah. the second, you know, on the streets is quite uh, quite interesting as well. But I'm not, I, I think probably thereafter, graphically or setting-wise, it might have lost me a little bit. I probably wasn't into it as much as I was in for Last Angel uh, 1. Mm-hmm. Um, no. But well, did you notice, I mean, how would you compare Last Angel 1 and Last Angel 2 graphically? <clears throat> yeah, it's... Kind of difficult um i think for last ninja 2 it always felt everything felt bigger to me like in your face kind of thing i think it's just because of the city and all that mm. like everything um you know you felt surrounded all the time yeah. it didn't feel open like last ninja yes you're first right one it feel, feels more open and yes uh, last ninja you got too. space to run even though you <laughs> you're on pause yeah technically in both games yeah. it just felt like Ninja 2 was more dense. A little bit more claustrophobic. And, um, in, in, in A little bit more in, claustrophobic, yeah. which I guess adds to that city yeah. vibe, which yes. I guess they nailed it. I yeah, yeah, you're right. It's <laughs> a city, it, I guess, dense but... city. You're going to feel things are over top of you and they, they, they did portray yeah. that correctly. It definitely didn't, like you said, it doesn't uh, have a story element though. The yeah. story element doesn't feel like it's um, progressing. You feel like you're just going to locations yeah. and you eventually get to the uh, the the mansion and take out the beggar but you know it doesn't feel like connected as much as say the last ninja yeah but that doesn't necessarily mean it's it's bad no. um i like i like a lot of um i like a little subtle touches in the graphics i mean last ninja the part where that little like water dragon pops out oh, of the, yeah. the and and then it goes down there's no reason for it to be there, but they just put it in yeah. and it's really nice. Yes. And they did that in Lost Ninja 2 also. Like when you climb in up, uh, when, you, when you're going through that apartment, um, the offices. Oh, with the uh, and Superman. They, they, yeah, and you <laughs> yeah. run out the window and Superman flies yeah. past. I love, I love that it's, little, it's, like, those nice little touches. Things. Yes. Mm. Like I said, Lost Ninja 1 also had said mm. that the, the white dove just flying across yeah, the screen. Exactly. Um, so, but both look wonderful. Yeah, uh, there's no doubt Amazing. about it. And Last Ninja Two it has the better, a little bit better animation, but I think for like, for me the setting, the aesthetic of it is um, a little bit more uh, to my liking in Last Ninja One. In saying that, uh, in in terms of giving them a rating out of ten, um, I'd, for graphics, Last Ninja One I'd give uh, nine point five. And Last Ninja 2, I'd also give 9.5. Again, the animation give me a little bit of a smoother polish to it, even though the setting may not be as to my liking as the first one. How about you, Brennan? Yeah, um, I'd have to go with Last Ninja 1 being my favourite. Um, so I would give uh, Last Ninja 1 9 yep. out of 10 for graphics, and I'd give um, Last Ninja 2 8.5. Yep. I think they're both top quality, and but... For me, just the the setting makes Last Ninja One just a little bit more appealing to me. Yep, that kind of old Japan style. Great, great, great. So there you go. We have Last Ninja One uh, hidden in the front at these early stages. Now, how about if we jump onto sound, or in this case, really music? 
Last Ninja 1 and Last Ninja 2 music soundtracks are probably the pinnacle for me in terms of C64 gaming. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> let's let's kick things off with, I said, in, when it comes to Last Ninja 1, every time I return to the game and hear the first couple of bars, a bam, yeah. bam, mm-hmm. I am just taken aback and... Uh, Nostalgia just overwhelms me. And so no matter what totally. it is I'm playing, the mood has been really set up for me and yeah. I'm ready to yeah. enjoy this game. And I do. And, and as the music then starts to kick in and beat and then you can, oh, I cannot help but hum along to it, you know, dun, 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 and mood around. <laughs> I'm in happy times. Um, I don't know if you have the similar feelings as well, uh, Brendan, around that. Oh, of course. Uh, the music is beyond excellent. Uh, it's Last Ninja 1 and 2 have the best Commodore 64 soundtracks you can possibly get, in my opinion. The first time I loaded up Last Ninja 1, even the loader music for each level in each game oh, yes. yeah. is as good as the in-game music. And yes. the in-game music is like, perfect and the loader music is just as good like that subtle if you're loading lost ninja one from tape and you have that subtle um kind of japanese sound um, music coming in it comes in slow and it's soft and it builds up it's so good it It, (laughs) just like it just puts you in the mood and and that's really key is um for anyone who does play uh, the last ninja these days I think that interlude graphic mm-hmm. and sound is part of the experience. You need to experience it that I think, way. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, don't if clip you, and no. you know, appreciate what's on offer and just that's just wonderful 8-bit music art. And I think it's a, all credit to who I think uh, they both, there was two collaborations with yeah. the soundtrack on that one. It is just a beautiful soundtrack to listen to. And um, oh, I said, I jump onto yeah. Spotify, whatever, and, and stream you know, the remakes of it. And it just yeah. really it sets the setting so well. Yeah, I know. Um, what's amazing to me about the soundtrack, to especially the first one, is um, the fact that it's by two different people, hmm. uh, Anthony Lees and Ben Daglish. Yeah. And I read, a, I read an interview uh, about the making of the the soundtrack and what's amazing is that both of them worked separately not knowing what each yes. other was making and you wouldn't know that and, would and, you and somehow it, when they came together and like you it, they just slotted um the music in it all just like comes together like perfect i don't know how that how that worked but it's just amazing it's no, like it's <laughs> it's just when, when when i look at when i listen to then the last ninja 2 uh, and so mm-hmm. when I listen to Last Ninja 2 in isolation, mm. wonderful, you know, equal, a really strong soundtrack overall. Oh, yeah. Uh, but if I play play or listen to it after Last Ninja 1, mm. it probably takes a little bit of a step back for me. Again, I think maybe perhaps again I appreciate the Japanese influence of the music of the first one. Where I mean, you do have that in Last Ninja 2, but at the same time, it's trying to portray a little bit of a, a big city um, sonic sound to it. Yeah. So it can't be all you know, flutes and you know, wind chimes. Yeah. It does have to be a little yeah. bit more grittier. But it, it, it said it, it probably isn't as over encompassing for me compared to Last Ninja One. Um, I, I don't know if, if, if what your feelings are. Is it? it I feel that the Last Ninja 1 tr- soundtrack is perfect for Last Ninja 1 game. I'm not mm. convinced that the Last Ninja 2 soundtrack is as a good as fit for Last Ninja 2. Um, That's interesting. It, yeah, so mm. it, again, especially in the later levels as well. So I think at the start, it's yes, okay, great, it all sounds well, and then, oh, hang on, where are we going with this? Or maybe it's just not as memorable, it's not something that I'm going to remember to hum. That's all I, what my take was on, on Last Ninja 2 soundtrack. Yeah, so for me, the Last Ninja 2 soundtrack, I love it. I think it's, I think it's excellent. Correct. But <laughs> there's, 
I know what you're saying. There are a couple of tracks in there that sound way too similar to previous tracks. Mm, correct. So, for for example, I think it's, I don't know, one of the first tracks in the game, and then there's another track later on. I always get these tracks mixed up whenever I try to listen to them. And, you you know, if you're doing that, you know, it's a little bit too similar. Like, you, you don't really get the tracks of the first one mixed up. They're very distinct. But uh, it's The Last Ninja 2, it, it, they kind of all mash together a little bit in my mind. Yes. Um, they're not as as distinct as the first one. That doesn't mean that, that they're bad. Yeah. They're really good pumping tracks. And I like some of the later ones where it gets a little bit more Japanese in style. I think it gets a little bit more Japanese, like in style later on, because you're getting closer to, you know, the bad guy, the main boss. So you're getting closer to his kind of domain. And then like you see, like, you know, when you go into the offices, you see more like Japanese kind of ornaments everywhere. And it gets a little bit more closer to uh, his mansion. But um, when you go back, it's like very hard rock kind of style, yeah. which is which which is pretty good. But when I loaded it up for the first time, it was definitely like, whoa, this is like a lot different. But yeah, it's still yeah. pretty good. Though. Yeah. No, no, definitely, definitely. Interesting. Both games have no sound effects. Mm -hmm. Do you think yeah. the game is any poorer for it? No. <laughs> no, I agree. I think it actually would diminish or take away from the game if they had the sound effects. Yeah, so usually I would like both. Yeah. But I think in this case, if you had sound effects in this game, it would just diminish the music. Yeah. And the music gives the game way more atmosphere than if you had both of them at the same time. So I don't think it makes any difference that there's no sound yeah. effects, even though usually I would be kind of like iffy about that yeah well um well i suppose it's time for us to rate the music on for both of these games i think when it comes to last ninja one i said for me it's there's nothing better and so that means last ninja one would receive a, t a score of 10 from me what about for yourself brendan 9.5 9.5 oh hard hard man to impress <laughs> <laughs> and what would you, what do you think of last ninja 2 yeah, I'd give it a nine. It's and, excellent. Uh, yep. And, uh, and yeah, from, from me, I'm also giving it a nine. Yes, yeah, still very, very good. But again, if I have to compare it against Last Ninja 1, it just, yeah. just, 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 just a little bit. <laughs> but let's, um, but mm -hmm. let's discuss the all important element. You know, it's all good for it to look nice and sound nice, yeah. but how does it play? This can be, a, I suppose, a controversial or decisive opinions across the C64 community when it comes to C, uh, Last Ninja and Last Ninja 2. Yeah. Um, for some, it still holds up as good as it did back in the late 80s. For others, it's been dated. And then there are, hard to believe that those who never appreciated how good the game was and hated it from the beginning. What are your thoughts? Mm, that's, a, that's a tough one. Um, Personally, I, I love it. I mean, otherwise, I wouldn't have played it, yeah. <laughs> obviously. But um, I definitely get, you know, what some of the complaints are. Um, there's a lot of people in the C64 community that I, I find either love these games or just hate them. Hmm. Um, and it's due to the controls. And I totally get it. Uh, controls are a bit iffy. Um, and when I say that, you know, I don't mean they're terrible. They just, they take a bit bit to get used to. Mm. If you played any other asymmetric games, like I said earlier, on the C64, characters were usually very, like, tank-orientated. Like, they moved in just yes. tank lines, and it didn't feel good. Yeah. I feel like The Last Ninja kind of broke that mold. It has, um, it is asymmetric, but it doesn't feel like you're driving a tank. Yes. It feels like you're controlling an, a person which I think is a big difference. And I'm not sure how they managed to, that subtle difference and to get that right, but it just feels right. Yeah, I, I, I do enjoy the controls of this one. I thought for me, it felt natural. Um, mm -hmm. I'm actually a fan of the jumping mechanism, but may, maybe not so much some of the pixel perfect um, uh, parts of the swamp and the rivers, but mm -hmm. with Last Ninja 1, the jumping, there's, there are three different distances. Yeah. Yeah, and... Once you understood that, then really 
the jumping mechanisms aren't that difficult. It's, it seems, yeah, well, okay, not. here's this section. I've got to go. It's a short, short, long. Really, yeah. well, for me, straightforward. Mm. Um, as opposed to Last Ninja 2 where it doesn't have those that nuisance. It's just one jump. And jump. so if you have to jump, jumping in, for me, in Last Ninja 2 mm-hmm. is a little bit more difficult, especially if I've gone, you know, normally I would play Last Ninja 1, Last Ninja 2, double header in one session. Yeah. And yeah. I'll, I'll kind of get frantic. Oh, hang on, this doesn't have this. I've got to just run and just time the button there. Um, and... and and I know, said when it comes to combat, some people view the combat as being basic. I don't. I think there is strategy. It's strategy in terms of oh, yeah, uh, what weapon you use, mm-hmm. be- yeah. and what type of attack you use. Yeah. Um, it's like I said in Last Ninja One, you can get away yeah, like Cobra Kai, strike early, strike hard, that type of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. It's where Last Ninja Two, uh, maybe not so much. Uh, the battle is a little bit longer, drawn out. Uh, you know the health yeah. bars in, is is mm-hmm. longer compared yeah. to Last Ninja Definitely One, longer. Yeah. Um, which probably I didn't like to be honest. I, I prefer the Last Ninja One, bang, you know, bang, bang, yeah. bang, 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 done. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. So if so, those who re- who position themselves in the right spot and reacted quick, the battle will be done and dusted. Yeah. And you get to keep your own health bar. Yeah. So that that's what it is. that's so there is a strategy behind Last Ninja One and Two in that you've got to work out which which weapon, which type of attack, in order Definitely. to uh, mm-hmm. maximise how much health I've got left. I yeah. don't know if you came away with any, or if you have any thoughts around that. Yeah, um, I never had any issue with any of the jumping. Um, like figuring out the swamp and the rivers, it takes a little bit of practice. And like you said, it's the way you angle your character gives different distances well in the first one any anyway yeah. once you understand that you can get through the swamp the rivers jumping on the stones it's not a big issue yeah. i don't know why people have a meltdown over that <laughs> um but uh definitely what you said is um last ninja 2 when you're fighting it definitely takes a little bit too long as opposed to last ninja where you can really take out a guy very quickly yeah um it's i prefer I prefer the subtlety of the first one in terms of that. And you definitely have to, it, it is strategic. It's like, um, you can even use your shuriken. Like yeah. if you're in a desperate situation and you don't want to lose any more health, just wait, throw a shuriken, the guy, one hit kill done. Yeah. Uh, you save that obviously, but, yeah. um, there is, there's definitely strategy. It's the strategy, like the weapons have using the, the bow, um, you know, it's got, got a much longer distance. You yep. can whack a guard and it takes up a lot more energy, but it's also slow, so you got to know when to use it. Yes, yeah. It's just like there, there's, there is a lot of strategy to the, to yeah. the action, and um, I think they both do a good job. Lost Ninja 2, definitely, like, the jumping. The jumping is, I wouldn't say dumbed down. It is slightly dumbed down. It's just made a little bit more simple, but that, that again, I re- did a review with a John Twitty where he where he apologized for the swamp <laughs> and the the river parts in the first one because it made so many people angry. Yeah, I obviously don't think he had to apologize for anything, no. but but he he tried to scale it back just to you know make it a little bit easier, I guess, for other people. And uh, you know the jumping is obviously way more simplistic. You have, you jump on that boat in the cent- central park. It's yes. it's just timing. You just wait and jump. It's yeah. very easy. And the part um, later on um, in some factory, you got to jump where the rail cart goes across, and it's 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 very simple. Yes, but uh, Maybe, yeah, I don't have any issue with it. I I still like the um, the more preciseness of the first one. Though. Yeah, me too. Yeah, and what about the puzzle elements of of both games? I mean, mm. it's uh, it's funny because I said um, I often <sighs> do forget that I need to collect the bag. Before I can collect uh, yeah. other mm. items, and <laughs> sometimes I get frustrated. Says, "Why can't I pick up this key? I'm right yeah, down yeah. here. Why can't I pick yeah, it up?" Yeah. And then, oh, hang on, I've got to pick up the bag before I start. So you know, there's funny things like that in Last Ninja One. But well, I suppose Last Ninja Two, maybe it makes a little bit more sense in some cases because it's a, the, the setting or so. I'm not sure um, what it says about me to know that if I pick up this mm. bottle with a rag in it. 
that I could use it to throw it to the alligator yeah, a light yeah. with it. So I don't know. Um, I, yeah, I, I definitely found uh, that that's funny. When I got that part in Last Ninja 2, I found the bottle and I knew I knew immediately that I had to make a Molotov yeah. to kill, kill the... Th- it just seemed natural. I think like, probably like, 80s I mean, it's natural. I'm not sure these yeah. days where it is, but... <laughs> Yeah, I think that's an eighties puzzle. Yeah. Like you definitely like okay, throw I'm throwing Molotov, obviously. That's <laughs> that's that's the solution. I think if I played that now, I would not have got yeah. that. Or if somebody else played that now, they wouldn't get that. But um I think uh I think the puzzle elements are a little bit more logical yeah. in the in the second one as opposed to the first one. Yes. I think at the first one they're a little bit more um, obscure. Yeah. Um not you know it's not a massive difference but i just found the the new york setting stuff just made more sense i guess it's just modern tropes i guess yes you're right how did you uh go with the level one dragon on last ninja Ooh, one wow okay so <laughs> little story about that thing uh so when i got the game running around collecting everything i'm happy as a clam and i got to the dragon go to run past it, I sort of sleeping, no, no problem, get fried. I'm like, okay, oh, you just have to jump over it. Okay, no problem, run, jump over, no, fried. And so that happened for, I think I got stuck there for a month originally when I got the game because there was no, there's no internet, there's no anything to look up anything unless yeah. somebody had the game and they got past it. Yes. That's, that's it. the only way you could find out. Or if a magazine had a, like a, player's guard which would come out months after the game so you you'd have to wait forever for that thing but i was stuck there for like yeah. at least a month or two until i saw a picture I, I, I don't know which magazine printed it if it was c plus vg or commodore user or whatever they printed a, a shot of where you actually had yeah. to stand exactly to use the smoke bomb on the dragon yes and as soon as I saw that, the rest of the game was... was yeah, I, uh, once I, you well, pass that... I was all the way through. through there. Uh, yeah, what, yeah same, you same thing. I, oh. it's like, <laughs> like you, for a month. I mean, I enjoyed... Oh, yeah. I, that's why level one is so ingrained in my mind because we that's all we had played <laughs> yeah, for the played first so month much. was level one. And I uh, think, I can't remember whether I did... Oh, I, I'd given my copy to a friend, said, see if you can work it out. Yeah. And he went away and spent maybe a week or so and then he called me up you know back in days we had landline phones yeah. and said oh apparently well my little brother worked it out so what how did he do it so we you know i went to his place show me how you do it. and no oh, and then we, we spent like a good hour trying to replicate what he did so we knew it was somewhere around there and we couldn't yeah, yeah. then that moment oh we finally oh. found that pixel uh spot that you need to be standing on and bang and like you said the rest was just the rest nothing was yeah. ever difficult after that yeah. Uh, so it's great memories. Well, Sid, um, I've, well, I'm mindful of the time because this is going to be one of the world record uh, in terms of uh, episode links for an RGN video. <laughs> so uh, let, let's wrap up. What uh, in terms of gameplay for me? Look, Last Ninja one, I'd give it nine, and to be fair, I think I'll give Last Ninja two eight point five from my end. How about yourself, Brendan? So for hmm, for gameplay, I'd give. Um... Last Ninja 1, 8.5, and Last Ninja 2, 8. 8. Oh, there you yeah. go. So that if we uh, use the magic calculator here, and I think, uh, look, it's, it looks pretty strong. It's Last Ninja 1 that has come out in front as being both yours and my favorite of the two, um, which is surprising because yep. I think I... He, he, if I thought back, I would have thought, oh, no, Last Ninja 2 is definitely my best. Last Ninja 2 would be best. And then when I sat down and thought about it and re- replayed them recently, mm-hmm. I thought, oh, no, yeah. it's it's Last Ninja 1. Whether it be nostalgia or whatever it is, is the one that just uh, A lot of people always say, yeah, a lot of people always say the Last Ninja 2 is better. Yeah. And I get, I, I get that. I understand, you know, yeah. there, are, there are definitely dark tweaks that are better. But when it comes down to it... Uh, just the first one is just it's just so much more yeah. nostalgic but it yeah. just feels better for me it just yeah i think it's setting when, when i play it it just feels better yeah. so you know i can't even like replicate what that even means but it, 
Yeah, yeah, it's it's the first one yeah. for me. For and, sure. and and it's quite important what you say that it feels better. And for anybody mm. who you know who might uh, comment uh, in, in the comments section about this video about Last Ninja Three, just mm. doesn't feel like a Last Ninja game to me. For me, yeah, it's just just it's, it's a it, mm. it took it. So hence, you know, uh, I was tossing and turning whether we make it a three way battle, but. No, I thought let's keep keep it really interesting and keep it tight between the two favourites, Last Ninja One and Two. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Brendan, and and it's been wonderful sure. to discuss two great games in our libraries, Last Ninja One, Last Ninja Two. Oh, and, so good. <laughs> and uh, for the folks out there watching this video. Whether you'll enjoy the game or not, we'd love to hear your thoughts about it, what you would rate mm -hmm. it, you know. You, maybe you, you agree with, with us on graphics and sound, but maybe not on gameplay. You know, those pesky <laughs> pixel-perfect jumps could really irritate some or not. But uh, I said, please do, do let us know what you think. We'd love to hear from you. And at the same time, um, you know, if this episode is of broad interest to my subscribers or Brendan's followers, Hopefully we can do a few more of these C64 Battle Series and let us know which two games you'd like us to discuss. But for, for awesome. now, that, that's the end for me. Thank you for joining us. Brendan, thank you very much for joining us. Until next time. Pleasure. See you later. Bye. Cheers. Last Ninja <laughs> One. <laughs> that was that was good. Damn, yeah, that was right. <laughs>